Oh, I'm going to need that for later. How's it guys and welcome back to my channel. This is that med guy. My name is James and today we are doing med maths. We will be starting off with the normal calculation you'll get in school. We'll go through to decimal places and then we will tackle the one thing that a lot of people, including myself, get confused all the time. Stay tuned to the end and you'll see what it's all about. Let's jump straight in. So the first thing that you'll learn about med maths in school is you'll have a calculation that says what is the dose that you're wanting to give the patient divided by how much you have on hand times by how much volume you have. So let's say we want to give morphine. So morphine is 10 milligrams and two mils. Let's say we want to give five milligrams. Five milligrams divided by 10 milligram times how much volume is in the amp, that's two mils. So five divided by 10 times two is equal to one. That's a bit of an easy um, calculation because we all know that five milligrams is half of 10 milligrams and there's two mils. But you get the point, if you had like one mil or 10 mils or eight mils, it's a bit of a different calculation, but the same thing applies. It's how much you want to give, then it is divided by how much you have times by how much volume is in the amp. And that's pretty much the simplification of that. The next point I would like to tackle with you guys is how decimal places can make a really big difference. Let's say we have a child who's 10 kilograms and we want to give adrenaline of 0 0.01. If you just move decimals left and right, you can get to your dose much quicker. So we have a 10 kilogram child and we want to give them 0 0.01 milligrams of Adrenaline, 0 0.01 is two decimal places to the right. And so if we take 10 kilograms and we move the decimal place two points to the left, so the 10 becomes then a one, and then the one becomes a 0 0.1, we're gonna give 0 0.1 milligrams to this patient. The same thing applies if it's a 20 kilogram patient. 20 kilogram patient, 0 0.01 dose, we're gonna move the decimal place twice to the left, so the 20 becomes a two and the two becomes a 0 0.2. We're going to give 0 0.2 milligrams to this patient. So if you have a 10 kilogram child and you want to give 0 0.25 milligrams, you're going to move the decimal place once because then you get a 1 and a 2.5. And so the dose you're going to give is 2.5 milligrams of whatever you want to give. Let's say you have a 20 kilogram child and your dose is 0 0.25. You're going to move the decimal place once over. So now you have a 2 on the left and a 2.5 on the right. You can now times them together and you will get five. That will be the dose for a 20 kilogram child who needs 0 0.25 milligrams. The same goes for micrograms and nanograms and grams and kilograms. It's really important to know the differences about these. Um, I'm not American. I'm not exactly sure what happens in America. I'd love to hear from you guys what, um, what metric system or the not metric system you're using. Uh, I know they're CCs, but that's about it. Pretty naive, I guess. The last point that I get confused, a lot of my students get confused, is milligrams and mils. So every drug has a concentration inside a vial. So you might pick up uh, like morphine or adrenaline or whatever it is, you'll have how many mils are in the vial and then how much drug is in the vial. Adrenaline is one milligram in one mil, but then morphine is 10 milligrams in two mils. The milligrams is how much like weight of drug is in each amp and the volume is how much liquid. These are two very different things and they must not be confused. So let's have a look at this. The concentration of Coke is 10 grams of sugar for every 100 mils of Coke. So that means that every 10 mils has one gram. Here are 10 mils of Coke. That is one gram of sugar. Does that help a little bit? The real conundrum and the thing that can confuse a lot of people is that if I now draw up 10 mils of water, what do I have? There we go. I had 10 mils of Coke and I just added 10 mils of water. How much sugar is in the syringe? Still just one gram. How much is in the syringe has not changed. The concentration, however, has changed. It's gone from 100 milligrams per mil to 50 milligrams per mole because I have doubled the volume. So we've halved the concentration. If I shoot out 10 mils of this, have I changed the concentration? No, the concentration is still diluted. It's still only 50 milligrams per mole, but I only have half a gram left. And that is really crucial to understand. 
a lot of people can get this confused. I've got this confused. It's important to realize that there is a weight of drug and then there is a volume that it is diluted in and these are the concentrations. The same thing when you're drawing up for infusions, you need to know exactly how many milligrams or grams of drug you have in the syringe and also you need to know how much volume is in the syringe so that you know exactly how much you're given and that's why it comes down to concentration and when you are labeling a syringe it's more important to put the concentration on there than it is to put on put on how many mils you put in there because someone might give some or withdraw some and then that can change what is in the syringe so guys always be careful when you're doing your drugs and your medications and please if you like this video please like and subscribe and we shall see you in the next video bye for now